G'day, Alistair Christie here from LearnDevDev.tv. In this video, we're going to look at dependency inversion and uh, sort of a, a bit of a hack that I've used in a project to, um, so it was a project in XE2 and it was ported to XE8. And at that point, the main project only occasionally compiles with the IDE, well, mostly the IDE crashes. Uh, with out of memory exceptions uh, because there's so many dependencies in the application the code was basically just using a lot of memory to compile and so I've used dependency inversion to reduce the memory requirements as uh, in the organization that this application is in migrating from x8 is uh, going to be quite a challenge to uh, get that installed um, anyway and aside, also, uh, to remove the background, I'm using this NVIDIA broadcast. And if we have a look, I can turn on, I've turned on the eye contact. So what it's using is a bit of AI to both remove the background and adjust my eye contact. So it tries to convince you that I'm looking at the camera when I'm not. So I thought it'd be interesting to try that out. Anyhow, so this application, is rather trivial. So the show color button is currently disabled until I pick a color and then I can click on show color and I can pick multiple colors and so on. So not, not particularly uh, exciting. And if we have a look at the code for this, we can see that in picking a color, we have a form color picker and we have a pick color method. And yeah, it's basically, uh, you just pick a color. Uh, it doesn't give you the option to not pick a color. If we come back, our show color execute, we have a show color method, which just creates the form. In fact, what I haven't done here is in on close, Should free the form. Um, and we are just associating it with the application. So when the application closes, it would have would have been freed. But um, if we're using this for a very very long time, it um, might have lots lots of these forms uh, taking up memory. Anyhow, back to the main form. So we can see that we've got some dependencies on this main main form. Uh, we're both using the color picker form and the show color form and if we look at uh, Inkscape which I've done a little bit of a diagram here our main form depends on these two and our project the DPR file depends on everything so basically if a unit is included in the application the DPR file either depends on it directly it's in its uses or indirectly it's in something else that is in its use you know so all the dependencies are available effectively in the DPR file. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the dependency of main form on show color and um, pick color. Now, to do this, I am effectively going to introduce a new unit. Uh, we, we could get away without it, and we might look at a way of doing that uh, later, but this is a kind of a really easy, easy way of doing it. So if we go back to our application, I should point out in this trivial application, the dependencies are not a problem, but it could be that the show color form that might have, you know, it depend on another hundred forms or something like that, something stupid. It might depend on, you know, a few other forms which depend on other forms, which depend on data modules and all sorts of other things. And if we wanted to reuse our main form, we might not want all those dependencies to be present. Um, it also will make the compilation a lot simpler for the IDE or for the compiler. And so it'll be a uh, heaven quicker and require less memory. So I'm going to start with a new unit. And I'm just going to call it dependency inverter. 
And what I'm going to do is if we look at our main, well, if we look at our, uh, let's go to the color picker first. We see we've got a sort of a, a, a class function which returns a T color. And so what I can do is um, create a variable, uh, we'll call it rather uninspiringly pick color. And oh, we're going to need the CL dot graphics, I think, and some classes, maybe. No system dot CTLs. Okay. And from the main DPR file, what I'm going to do is T copy that. Uh, what did I call it? Pick color. Okay. And likewise with our show color form, I'm going to grab this, uh, this here. Uh, and dependency inverter. Uh, not there, that's going to be Okay, so we're setting up these two things from the dependence, our dependency inverter unit. And uh, what I'm going to do is remove these two. And do that. And we can run our application and it should behave exactly the same. And we can show do a show color and so on. So that was fairly straightforward to do. Uh, but what have we achieved? If we go back to our little diagram, I have a new version of it here. And so our main form now depends on dependency inverter and dependency, dependency inverter has no dependencies outside the Delphi runtime library and show color and put color uh, all by themselves. So this means that now main form can be compiled uh, without show color and put color or potentially even being present. Uh, what we will get is a runtime error if our methods aren't set up. So and yeah, so what, what, what does this really achieve? Well, for the project I was working on, uh, the memory requirements for compiling the application uh, is uh, a bit less. Uh, in this case, not by very much because show color and put color are simple. They have no dependencies in themselves. And so, yeah, it's not, not too much of an issue. What, what can happen is that you end up with show color depends on something, depends on something, and you end up this big thing and it comes back and depends on main form or something like that. So you end up with these dependency loops and they're very undesirable, both from a maintenance point of view and from, uh, I think the um, compiler has a hard time with, with loops. It can still do them, but uh, it's a, you, you end up with a, a chicken and egg type situation. Uh, to, you know, to compile main form, you need to have already compiled main form. Okay. 
Now, this has, of course, a lot of drawbacks in terms of debugging and what have you. If I, you know, control click on this, we end up nowhere. We don't know what. Uh, <laughs> uh, this, is, this is just a, a function that uh, returns a, a T color. And so we need to work out where that's hooked up. Um, so it's a, a bit annoying in that respect. And we do have this, this dependency inverter file could get quite large and there could be a lot of files depending on it. But as you can see, uh, not, not every file will depend on it because um, we're hooking it up in the uh, main project file. And of course the main project file already has these dependencies present, so they're, they're unavoidable. And of course, oops, if we run it, it it's working exactly as before. Now, this, this form of dependency inversion is fairly, fairly easy to add into an existing project, but there are of course better ways of doing dependency inversion. You might use a uh, dependency inversion framework or dependency injection framework, but we can also inject these dependencies directly into our main form. So if I put these functions here as public, I suppose technically that should be private. Anyway, so if we now come back to our main project file, Uh, so we're now injecting our dependencies directly into the form. We don't need this dependency inverter unit anymore. And it should work just as before. And again, our form main does not depend on, well, anything else in the project, which is nice. We don't have this dependency inverter um, I mean, that, that can go now. Uh, I could remove that from the project uh, completely. And it's, you know, everything's playing very nice. But uh, in this trivial case, injecting the dependencies uh, here is fairly easy. It can be a lot more tricky if you know, if we were injecting de dependencies in, say, um, one of these forms, because we might have the effect that we have to first inject the dependency, dependency into the main form and then pass it on to, say, the show color form or something like that. And that gets re really messy and complicated. So having a uh, dependency inverter unit, I that's it's a it's not not particularly clean and purists would 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 be aghast at it but uh, in terms of retrofitting dependency inversion to an existing application it's fairly straightforward um, our doing this method injection or property property injection is a technically much better way of doing it but it can be uh, a lot more hard work to set it up and involve quite a bit more code. One one thing that one issue is that we so if I uh, let's go we'll do it in the main form. So in the show color, um, it's just oh, go to the main form. The show color we see it's just a procedure that takes a T color, um, not a big deal in this case, but you might have lots of um, other parameters. And it, so this could be, you know, a, 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 a T color and a Boolean and a string and something else. And you don't really know what those parameters do from here. Or we know that it's a procedure that takes a parameter. So I could have a um, Reference to procedure that takes uh, um, a
like so and then this becomes and from here we see that we've got our parameter insight whereas we have an argument one so you can do the full definition of the procedure if you like it's a bit of extra code uh, in these cases not really not really an issue in effect for the, the tfunk you don't really get anything extra uh, it's the, just the parameters and knowing what the parameter names are that can be helpful um, at design time anyway so i hope you have found this video useful do go to my website learndelphi.tv and buy my book code fast in delphi or uh, one of my videos in particular the mega pack uh, which is very enormous it'll take you a, a sort of a week of full-time viewing to get through it just about and i'll see you in the next video also like and subscribe if you want to also help out the channel and uh, enable other people to find it a bit more easily so thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video